I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson, Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. This is a nice little child-sized Boston rocker. Uh, it was badly damaged when a pipe burst in the customer's home. And you can see how the finish has all turned opaque in places and there's some plaster of paint on this arm. Um, this chair is very old. It's, it's got to be 19th century. I don't see any reason not to think it's not original to the Boston rocker era, which is around 1840. So the first thing I'm going to try, and I always try this if there's, we know this is water damage or caused by water, is I'm going to use a little bit of alcohol and a rag and see if it will take this whiteness away. And I'll start off in an inconspicuous area, uh, probably the inside of this rocker. So I'm going to take a rag, just a knit rag like this. This is denatured alcohol. It seems to be working. It seems to be taking that off. This kind of looks like dirt to me, but I got to be really careful I'm not taking away the finish. If this is shellac on here, I would definitely be taking it off with this alcohol. That may be okay. Uh, you can see the false graining. A chair like this is all uh, grained and it won't take away the graining. So it seems to be working. My subsequent padding, uh, the, there's not nearly as much getting on the rag here. I think I'll try doing this whole rocker start from the inside out here and see how it goes. Here I'm revealing some gold paint that, that I think I'm going to find on all these parts of the turning. In fact, there's a little gold stripe. i got to be really careful that my rag doesn't take any of that gold off. Okay, I'm going to get a little adventurous here and see if I can use a brush. This probably is a coat of shellac on this chair. Maybe that's why it discolored so much in the moisture. But what's nice is that the alcohol is taking away that layer of shellac, but you know, the original graining stain and the oil and the gold and all is, uh, doesn't seem to be disturbed by the alcohol. You can reveal the original gold paint and then what is revealed is what might be a little bit of uh, later touch-up work. Now comes the part that's a little scarier. I'm going to do this front piece here, but here we have stenciling. So I've already determined that the alcohol doesn't seem to disturb the gold too much, but I don't know about the stenciling. So I'm going to start with my dirty rag initially, and then I'm going to switch to a clean rag so I can really make sure that I'm not pulling anything off of it. Now I'm going to switch to my clean rag. I'm still seeing dirt on my rag but I'm not seeing any gold or colors. Here I seem to be getting down below another layer. You know, the question is, is you know, how far am I going to go? You can see the details are missing. But I'm too afraid that I might be taking some off. I might just have to stop right there. This looks like actual plaster. My ceiling collapsed. There's still a little bit of whiteness there I can't seem to get rid of. I think I'll come back to that later. Saved the 
scariest part for last. This is the crust trail. It's got a lot of stenciling here. The stenciling looks pretty good, so I'm going to go at it very carefully. See the gold line coming to life, and you can really see the graining now behind. And I'm going to move on to this area and just be really careful. For a second here, I thought I was removing something, but actually I'm revealing this extra little detail in all these berries. I still might work a little bit on trying to get rid of some of this darkness, but I'm going to stand pat on that for now and move on to the rest of it. may just stop right there. I may or may not work on this a little bit more. I've got some places around the edges I know can lighten up, but some of the stuff I just may not fool with it anymore. I'm gonna probably more or less stand pat. I've got a lot of other places I have to go back over just to clean it up and, uh, and get it ready. So I'll just go over the whole thing again with a clean cloth and a little bit of alcohol, make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, I've let that dry overnight, and I think the chair looks really good, uh, ready to wax, except uh, the arm, especially this arm, still has some white haziness that wouldn't come off with the rag. So, I'm going to stick with the alcohol, but I'm going to use a, a ultra-fine Scotch-Brite pad to see if I can get rid of that haziness right there. I think it's coming off. I think that's got it pretty good. Now do the other one. I think I'm going to need to put a little stain on these arms. Uh, my scrubbing may have gone a little bit too far. I may put a little mahogany stain on it, let it dry overnight, and then I'll wax it. And the reason I'm using mahogany stain is be not because I want it to look like mahogany, but this chair has a very, very reddish background. I suspect before they painted and decorated it, the first step was a mahogany stain. Yeah, that looks good. Typically the arms, the finish is worn off the arms a little bit. So I think that looks pretty good. Okay, I think my stains dried well enough and I can now wax this. I'm just gonna use a nice paste wax. I'm gonna use steel wool here with the wax, but I'm applying very, very light pressure. You want to use as little wax as you can to get the job done. You don't want to have too much wax that you then can't buff out or really get off. Boston Rocker. If you remember, it had been in a bad flood and was just like completely white, hazed out, and I just rubbed it down with uh, alcohol very carefully. It got rid of that whiteness, and then I basically just uh, waxed it. I think it looks pretty good.